Hello everyone, I am back again here at Winter 89 Colors. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I thought that I would give you another little book tour of one of my collections, and as you can see from here, it is the Kirby Rosanna's collection. So let's call this a book tour slash completed pages. Sure, let's do that. There might be some whips in here as well. I mean, you can tell by the tags there's some whips in here, but I'll give you a peek at those as well. Why not? Because you haven't really seen much of my work. You've seen what I have in my Johanna Basford collection so far, um, and that's about it. You haven't seen anything else that I own. So I thought that Kirby, being as popular as he is, and since he's one of my largest collections, uh, I would start with him. So I don't have all of his books, but I do have a fairly reasonable collection of them, as you can see. I've got uh, quite a few. Uh, definitely his Worlds collection I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, as you can see. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'll, we will just get started in this. So I figured we should start with Anamorphia because this was the first Kirby book that I owned, I do believe. Um, and it's the one I've done the most work in. Now, to be fair, I have used this book quite a bit for experimentation because some of the pages I didn't know what to do with. Um, and also, if you've listened to my mental health chat, um, I had some incidents where things did not go the way I planned them because I may have been under the influence when I did them. So I will point those out as they come along, or maybe I won't. We'll see how I feel about them. Uh, but anyways, so here's Anamorphia. Uh, this was one of those aforementioned mistakes. I tried to erase it as much as possible, but... Uh, Still looks pretty vivid, but I'm sure I'll come back to that eventually and do something with it. So here is the title page. Um, as you can see, I put a fair amount of work into this one. I'm loving these little hummingbirds. I think they turned out just swimmingly. All the little flowers and the glitter. So much glitter. The, pos the background is Posca. As you can probably tell if you look real close, you can see the coloring lines. Um, I have glitter glue on these little flowers here, a rose gold glitter, a bright gold glitter. Um, I've got some jelly roll in here, some metallic jelly rolls. We've got the neon prismas for these little doodads and doohickeys. And some gold paint for the outer border. So those turned out pretty well. I'm not too displeased about that. And of course this was done with prismas. This was an experimentation. This was my first time really trying to use watercolor pencils. So these were the Prisma watercolors, at least on this half. Um, and I tried to do like a rainbow blend. So I put, you know, the reds and the oranges together, the oranges and the yellows, and the yellows and the greens, and then the greens and the greens. Um, and then I just kind of used a really cheap um, palette watercolor paint, you know, dollar store styles just to to fill in some of the blanks back here um i don't know if i'm going to come back in and, and keep working on this one or not um or if i've decided it's just going to be scrapped as an experiment but uh, you know honestly i'm not too unhappy with the way the horses turned out so it's all right this is a proud piece for me you've probably seen it in my social media if you have me on such spaces this double page spread of the stampede. So this was done with Prismas. Um, you can see I did all the little doodads in the neons again. Um, but yeah, I like the way this turned out. It was one of my first great efforts as far as, you know, a little bit of realism, that kind of thing. You can see I did this giraffe first. Wasn't super happy with the way the colors turned out. Did this giraffe second. Liked him much better. I'll zoom you in a little bit so you can... Sorry about that. So you can see the uh, the difference. Yeah. Figured it out a lot better on that one, eh? Horses turned out really, really nice. Pretty proud of them. Same with the bull, the lion. They all turned out pretty nicely. The background is um, stamping ink. You know, just a nice, cheap craft store stamping ink. It's not, it's not Ranger or distressed or anything like that and as you can see my binding has completely given up on life so this one I did not too long ago um kind of Halloween themed as you could see I saw this little pumpkin here and I thought you know what 
we're gonna go Halloween themed on this guy. So I started with a soft pastel background and then erased out the, uh, the outlines that I needed to erase. This was again, all done with Prismas. As you can see, I put in lots of glitter and shinies. Um, so a lot of these ones, like the fish and the pumpkin, the glitter in that is actually this stuff, folk art glitterific fine, which I fail to find in any stores anymore. I don't know if they make it or if they don't sell it in Canada anymore, but it's, uh, I have a hard time finding it. I was hoping to find it in other colors, but I haven't yet. Um, this here is, you can see that glitter is just a little bit, it's more subtle. That's the Paper Mate Flare Metallics. Same with his beak there, a little bit of glitter if you get it on the right. Not like these guys, the Glitterific, that's just like, woo, hello glitter. There's also more of the flare in here as well, but, and the rest is all just Prisma. Yeah, so he's nice. This was an experiment with something I've been playing with recently. Um, I'm actually pretty mad about how it turned out because again, I was just maybe a little off kilter when I did it, but the practice was sound in principle. I used oil pastels and then I used mineral spirits to dissolve them and then spread them around. So they worked almost like a watercolor paint using the mir mineral spirits. This would have turned out actually quite nice based on where all the highlights came out and everything if I had been a little bit more sound of mind when I did it. So I don't know if this is salvageable or not. I, it might be. I might be able to use the mineral spirits to clean up these edges. Um, but we will, we will see in the future if I decide to return to that. Same thing on this one, except that this was using... Um, soft pastels. So I used soft pastels and just sort of, again, was experimenting with how I could use them as a base. Again, had I been a little more sound of mind, um, it probably would have worked in theory. Again, something I could probably return to later since soft pastel is fairly uh, erasable. I am not a drawer, um, so I saw this page and at one point I had, in fact, tried to draw in a couple of little bats. As you can see, I kind of replicated this one, but it wasn't going super great. So I decided to just draw some outlines and then fill them in with black Posca. And then I used a obviously metallic copper paint in the background. I colored this little devil dude using the Papermate flares. And these two little bats were Prismas. Um, I just wanted to finish this page because I, you know, started it. Um, I didn't want to leave it unfinished because of that. So I just kind of quickly filled in the page. And I'm not too unhappy with it. I mean, it's cute, but it's not a work of art by any means. So this baby I'm actually pretty proud of. It's technically a whip, but I think it's going to be a forever whip because um, I'm doing the background all with Artex pencils and I didn't realize how much work it was going to be when I started it. It took me forever to finish off this little section. My hand hurt by the end of it and I just don't think I can carry that through, through the whole thing. So theory was sound in principle and it looks great. The whale is nice. All the details turned out good. It was all done with prismas as you can see I did really dark boring earth tones for all the corals and everything so that I could do the background nice and bright. Actually I started this whale in Crayolas. His all this part is all Crayola and I didn't know where to go from there because I couldn't remember what pencils I used, which colors and whatnot. So from here on and then this part is all Prisma as you can tell by the much bolder brighter colors. But it kind of looks like it was supposed to be that way. So maybe I can just leave this as is where it's all these brightness and he's kind of creating this brightness as he's going. We've got it a little boring here. I don't know. We'll see what we do with this one. But as you can see, I wrote down all the colors for my background. That is a lot of colors for a background. Like that is a lot. 
How am I ever going to get through that? I don't know, man. Again, my binding is just shot. It's just, look at this. Oh my goodness. This little fox was, I think, one of the first pages I finished in here. Um, he's... You know, he turned out okay. No real color scheme whatsoever. I just kind of threw random colors at it as I felt like it. Zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see. The fox himself turned out quite nicely. Um, his eyes are pretty and like the, the fading fur looks good. Um, but all these little doohickeys, I, I had no idea what to do with them as far as color scheme goes. So I just kind of picked colors at random. Again, all Prisma. The background is black pastel with a little bit of like fine liner on the edges there as you can see it's kind of stark versus you know that um i probably should have just finished it off in black paint but it looks not too bad as it is i guess i'll probably just leave it like that this guy i'm quite proud of my first double page, I believe, that I did in Kirby, or in anything, really. Um, this Komodo dragon. The background, not super proud of that. That was just cheap watercolor paint, because I didn't know what to do with it. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, but all these little creatures here, I thought that they worked out pretty well. Although it's not technically, like, a color scheme. It did work out and it looks reasonably coordinated. I've got the whole kitchen sink living on here. I'm not gonna try to name everything. The Komodo itself is all Prisma. But down here, I have no idea. It's like, I can see that there's metallic jelly rolls. There's like actual like glitter. There's neons of some kind. I, I don't know, like just everything. So, but super fun nonetheless. This one is a more recent post to my social media. I had originally started this one, just the background. Um, it was one of those things where when I was stuck and I didn't know what to do, um, when I wanted a, I wanted to color, but I couldn't get the inspiration to color, I just started coloring in this background just to get pencil to paper. I was using, I literally picked the background based on my least used Crayola pencils. Um, just to, you know, just so that I wasn't wasting pencils that I really liked. And it turned out surprisingly good. Like, I got so far through it that I thought, eh, I'll just finish the background. And then, once I got the background done, I was like, well, I may as well finish the rest, because that's the hard part done. So I just kept going. So it is all done in Crayolas. Guys, if you've used Crayolas, you will know what a labor this is. To do a double page Kirby, including the background entirely in Crayolas, my hand hurt for weeks after that. But it turned out, so I can't really complain. I'll zoom me in so you can have a better look. Um, so I've got metallic acrylic paint for all these little clouds and waves and ha what have you, lined with white Posca. I've got uh, glittery uh, metallic paints and uh, glitter paints and all kinds of things on here. You can see all the metallic paints and the acrylics, watercolors, you name it. All kinds of glitter and glitter glue. You can see all kinds of different things happening. I'm sure there's metallic jelly rolls in here somewhere. You know, she turned out really nicely actually i'm not gonna complain and i think that's the last in this book yeah that's the last in my anamorphia so that is anamorphia by kirby rosanis next color morphia i think i got this one not long after anamorphia um i can't remember i might have been before anamorphia but i'm pretty sure it was the second book that i got so i'm gonna skip past all the artist renditions so here's a whip. I'm actually really proud of what's happened with it so far, but I cannot bring myself to finish off all this 
rock stuff. Um, I started it up here by the elk. As you can see, I got some shadowing, but it's not, it's not gone very far. It's been years since I started this one. However, I am really happy with each of the elements and how they went. Again, this is all Prismas. Particularly proud of this little guy here. Everything went super well with it, so I'd love to finish it, but I just can't bring myself to do all this rock. It just feels draining to me. So hopefully, eventually, I'll be able to bring myself to do that. But for now, it still looks pretty good. Yeah, I think you guys can guess what happened here. I scrapped this one. I tried to salvage it at one point. But it just, I'm just not happy with it. You know, I'm just, I just don't like it. So I'm going to scrap it. And I think it's in another book that I have, maybe. So I'll do it at that point. Same thing here. You know, I don't like the direction it was going. Not happy with it. I could maybe gesso it out because not too much of it has been, you know, run down, but I just, I don't like it. It's not, it's not my thing. So I threw it out. This one I was going to start. As you can see, my idea was I was going to do cool on this side and warm on this side. And I colored the eyes accordingly and wrote it down um, with just some pencil. But I never got around to it. So hopefully eventually I will get there. I want to do that one eventually too. That's really nice. Ah, this was my first ever completed page. I don't know why, but when I was with this one, I was in a hyper fixated mood. And I just sat down for 12 hours and colored this using Prismas. Just all Prismas, absolutely nothing else, no gel pen, nothing. It's just Prismas. And I'm particularly proud of this background and the way it turned out. It looks almost like a moon is in behind there, eh? The whole idea was that I wanted to do blue and red plants because then he could be the combination of those in the purple. Zoom in for you. The little playing card there. And the little goggles. All right, this is a, a whip, started it. It's not bad, not the world's worst job. I could definitely continue this, but I realized how intimidating the rest of this is to me. I have to come up with a plan for this, so. Is that it? I think that might be it in here. Yeah, I got a lot of work to do in this book. I haven't touched it much, and everything I have touched in it, I'm not too happy with aside from one or two, so. Next, Worlds Within Worlds. Everyone's favorite book. Everyone's favorite book, right? Everyone loves this book. I haven't done a ton of work in it, honestly, but what I have done is pretty cool so far. I'll go from the back just because I know there's not a lot in here. It's easier to flip. I'm so intimidated by this book. Like, I love it and I want to work in it, but I also don't want to ruin it. You know what I mean? Maybe I should just get a second copy. So this is my... Dollhouse Whip, as you can see, it's been a labor of love. Like, I have worked on this for a long time, and I've still only got, like, not even a third of it done. So there's the little elf room, or dwarf room, matching curtains. Turned out pretty good. The little fairy room, or little kitchen. Thought it turned out pretty nice. Again, matching curtains. And then... Unicorn room. Again, this one has a lot more material to it. These are the uh, the top two were just mostly prismas. This bottom one, I've got metallic paint, jelly rolls. I've got uh, stencil and ink here. As you can see, a little bit of glitter here and there. Pretty happy with it though. I hope to move on and uh, continue my work in it, and hopefully, eventually, get it finished one day. 
God, I so want to do this one. It's probably my favorite in the book. A lot of people have said that, I know, but I do want to do that one. Maybe I'll try to do it on screen. And you guys want to see me work on some of these on screen. I can't promise they'll be perfect, but if any of you guys do want to see me work on them on screen, let me know. This is done with Crayolas. And it is a labor of love. I work on a tiny piece of this, you know, as often as I can. I'll just do one little piece of coral to try and get it moving, you know. I know I'll eventually finish it, but it's going to take some time. So he turned out pretty good. Can't complain too much. So I do have Alien Worlds. I have one whip in here that I started as a tutorial or a color along with Karen at My Colorful Country Life, as I do. But I'm not super happy with the way it's turning out. I might try to erase it and start again. Um, just because something, because I think it was so long ago that I forget kind of where I left off. So I might have to start it again. I'm not sure, but that's all I've touched in this book. I love this book and I can't wait to get into it, but I've got so much else that like, I don't want to get into this until I've kind of worked through some other stuff first. But I will eventually get to this. I love it because I don't have to worry about what color I do things. You know what I mean? I can do it any color because this is all alien worlds. I don't have to worry about making sure that the plants are using lifelike colors or the water is the perfect blue, doesn't matter. I can do whatever I want. So that'll be fun. Fragile World. I love this book. And again, it's one that I want to do lots in, but haven't. So many beautiful pictures in here. But again, I, I'm, so dr I'm so tempted to try and do it so realistically um, that I'm a little intimidated, you know, like, I shouldn't care that much, but because it's so realistically done, I want to make it realistic, you know, and that's always really hard. I love these axolotls. So cute. I have done a couple in here, though. Ah, I have him marked. You know, I looked up what he, he looked like on Google and I was going to start him, so I probably will do him soon. This is a very recent one. I just got this one done the other day and I am so happy with it. It's unbelievable. Like the frogs turned out fantastic. The flowers, the background, everything. The background is just so glittery. It just looks so great with that gold glitter over top of that multicolored muted background. Oh, I just love it. Here, let's zoom in a little. So lots of glitter. We've got Jelly Roll Stardust on his eyes here. Also on the, uh, the snail's trail here. This is all done with prismas otherwise. A little bit of, like I said, just jelly rolls. And of course this is, um, this is just clear acrylic paint with, um, with gold glitter added to it. So yeah, the background is all sort of a concoction of mine, but the background is prisma underneath. So, pretty happy with that. Cannot complain about how that turned out. And then I just did this little guy. I felt the need to do him a little less realistic. So he's realistic, obviously. He's very... Um, you know, I tried to do him as realistic as possible with the little bits of seaweed being green. and But then his egg, I used neons. I used like neon um, prismas and what I you know, didn't, don't like the way that turned out. When I um, was finishing it off, I smudged a little bit, but that's okay. And I've got the glitterific, decor glitterific on there. 
just for fun. So very cute. And that's Fragile World. Next we have Mythic World. I'm gonna start from the front on this one because I think my favorite one's in the back. Lots of work to do in this one as well. Finish this one off. Really happy with it. Baba Yaga. Posca background. The rest is Prisma. Nothing else. No embellishments. Nothing. Just Posca and Prisma. Turned out really well. I love the fading. So she looks ghostly down here. It turned out really, really well. The trees. I got a little help from Karen at My Colorful Country Life. I watched her tutorial just to get an idea. I didn't copy it exactly, but at least she gave me like a starting point to kind of get it going. The rest I all did off the top of my head. But thank you, Karen, for getting me started on those trees. I really appreciate it. Sorry, guys, just kind of getting through here. Again, I have so much work to do in these. So much work. I've watched almost all of Karen's tutorial on this book. And she does such a magnificent job that I just don't even know. <sighs> I'm so sad that I ruined this one. I scrapped it. It does not look great. I'm not even going to zoom you in. You don't want to see how badly I did on this. The idea was is that I had divided it up using pencil. I just kind of like drew some lines where I was going to do bright colors in certain quadrants and then boring neutral colors in other quadrants to represent them breaking out of, you know, the, the stone figurines, right? But I was once again, unfortunately, out of my mind a little bit when I did it. So it didn't turn out very well and it's really badly like maimed. I tried to erase it, but it was just not happening. So I may have to get another copy of this book in order to finish this one. Finally, this one I love. This one was inspired by, again, Karen at My Colorful Country Life. Although it looks absolutely nothing like hers, I watched her color along on it, uh, which gave me a lot of ideas as to how I could do it. And I wanted to specifically do it differently than her. I love the way hers turned out too, um, but I wanted to do something quite different. So um, all the back, all these background pillars were all done in rainbow fashion. As you can see, we've got our warm rainbow and then our cool rainbow. I wanted to do the stone statues kind of like a sandstone, like they would have been. I looked up pictures on the internet and like the, the stone would have been a warm stone as opposed to like a cool gray. It would have been like warm yellowish stone. So I did that and then I used French grays. This is all Prisma, obviously. French grays to do the animals breaking out of their stone habits. So it's almost like the humans got it wrong. They have all gold accents on the stone and statues, but the actual animals themselves have silver accents and they have gray coloration and what have you. I thought that was a pretty cool concept where, you know, whoever made the statues was close, but no cigar. The background again was faded prismas from dark blue to light blue and I put a metallic acrylic paint over top of it. There are other um, accents in Jelly Roll and what have you. So like this guy on his teeth there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's glittery Sakura Jelly Roll in there. Um, there's some, oh that's metallic Prismacolor actually. Um, down on the bottom here, there's metallic jelly roll on those little dots. Uh, the blankets on the elephants here, paper mate flares. But a lot of these metal accents that I've done were done in metallic prisma colors. Oh, metallic watercolor for these little elephants too. Didn't turn out great, but compared to everything else, you know, it's a small oversight. Good. And I think that's all I have in here. Yeah. Bring me back out. So that's Mythic World. And finally, World of Color. I only have one whip in here. And that is 
this. I love the way it's turning out so far. As you can see, I wrote down all of my colors in um, Prismacolor. And uh, she's looking fantastic. I am loving how she's turning out. That leopard print in particular looks really nice. Her red hair. Yeah. So I do have to get back to this one eventually. Hopefully get that one finished. I really like it. But yeah, for some reason, I just felt the need to, you know, out of all the pictures in this book, this was the one I wanted to do. So there we have it. And that is my entire Kirby Rosanna's collection. Well, thank you for joining me, everyone. It was really nice to have you all here. And thank you for listening. Um, if you want to see me do any coloring on camera, I can't promise it's going to turn out great, but uh, I will give it a go if you want. Um, if you have any questions or you want to see anything else, let me know. And I will be back eventually to do a tour of more of my books. Thank you so much.